hey, what's zero times anything? Zero. Nice. So that's what the zero product property is saying. So if you look, um, if we had something like x plus 3 times x minus, or sorry, x plus 2 equals zero, if I can get the x plus 3 part to equal zero, then it doesn't matter what the other one is because zero times that would equal zero. Conversely, if I can get the x plus 2 part to equal zero, then it doesn't matter what the other part would be because that times zero equals zero. So to solve problems with the zero product property, you take each part with a variable, and you set that part equal to zero, and then you solve it. So if we had x plus 5 times 2x plus minus 6 equals zero, we would set up two equations. We'd say x plus 5 equals zero, and 2x minus 6 equals zero. Because again, remember what that means. If I can get either chunk of this to equal zero, then it doesn't matter what the other part is because zero times anything is zero. So let me solve these equations. x plus five equals zero. We'll subtract five from both sides. We get x equals negative five. We're gonna have two solutions here because we're also gonna solve the right part. Two x minus six equals zero. We would add six. Two x equals six. And then we would divide by two we get x equals 3. Both of these are proper solutions to the original equation. So let's try some more of that. There we go. x plus 7 times x minus 4. Let's set up the two equations. x plus 7 equals 0 and x minus 4 equals 0 x plus 7, we'll subtract the 7. So x could equal negative 7. Another way to think of it is if you just have x and something, then your answer would be just the opposite of that. So it says x plus 7, our answer was negative 7. This one said x minus 4, so our answer is going to be positive 4. So eventually, once you do enough of these, you might be at a place where you don't even need to show the step of setting up the equation. It's usually a good idea to do that though. Set up our two equations, 3y minus 5 equals 0, and y minus 2 equals 0. How do you solve 3y minus 5? Well, you would add the 5 first. 3y equals 5. And then you don't want that 3 there, so we'll divide by 3. And just leave it 5 thirds. You can't simplify that fraction anymore. So you don't need to turn it into a decimal. You don't need to turn it into a mixed number. You certainly could. The other equation, y minus 2 equals 0, you just add the 2 to both sides. y equals 2. These are both solutions if you plug them into the original equation. C, set up your two equations. 6k plus 9 equals 0, 4k minus 11 equals 0. Let's do the 6k plus 9 first. We'll subtract the 9. 6k equals negative 9. We'll divide by 6. Now, you can simplify 9 over 6. 3 goes into multiple. 3 goes into negative 9, negative 3 times. 3 goes into 6, 2 times. Negative 3 over 2, or negative 1.5. 4k minus 11 equals 0, and we'll add 11. 4k equals 11, and we'll divide by 4. You can't simplify 11 over 4, so you just leave it. One more of these. Same procedure, though. We got this. Set up your two equations. Five, 5h plus 1 equals 0, and h plus 6 equals 0. Let's go ahead and solve the h plus 6. That one's easy. We'll just subtract the 6. h equals negative 6. Over here, we've got two steps. First, we'll subtract the 1. 5h equals negative 1. Then we'll divide by the 5, and we're done. 
H equals negative 